Oh my gosh, it's so yellow. So I think I need a new method. Hey, this is Simple Living with Beata. I'm a wife and a mom and my goal is to live as simply, naturally, and self-sufficiently as possible. Less than a year ago, we sold our home, we moved into a trailer, and five months ago, we bought 18 acres of raw land, and we're working away at building our dream home and homestead from start to finish. This week, we're doing one of our very first homesteading tasks, which is making maple syrup. It's been such a blast, and this week, we're using our wood boiler for the very first time. I'm so excited to be on this journey, and thank you so much for joining along. Okay, so I'm at the property, I'm collecting sap, but I'm noticing something pretty crappy. So the last three days that it has been raining, I've not been able to get out to the property and a lot of my buckets just have like a ton of rainwater in them. And so it looks super yellow. I tasted it, it's not even sweet. So I don't even think it's worth collecting. Sometimes if you get a little bit of yellow from rainfall, it's okay. But I mean, if it doesn't taste like sap, I don't really wanna keep it. Anyways. I'm dumping a lot of my buckets. It's so sad. So the sap is supposed to look crystal clear like water and have a really light sweetened taste to it. If it's cloudy, it means it's gone bad. And if it's yellow, it means it either has rainwater in it or bad bacteria, or sometimes it's the end of the season amber color as well. Okay, so this is my newest tap. There's rainwater on the top. It's quite yellow. Oh my gosh. It's so yellow. So you can tell it's not the tree because the stuff coming out of the spile is perfectly clear, but that looks like pee. So I think I need a new method. So the last two years, I've been drilling a hole in the top of the bucket and using the PVC pipe. But now I'm gonna try this new method I found on YouTube where you drill a hole in the side and you put the spile directly into that. This is supposed to reduce the amount of rainwater that gets into the bucket. property and it's boiling day. First off, it's time to collect some kindling. I love getting dead cedar twigs to help start the fire and some dead birch bark. They are the absolute best fire starters, but our issue is not starting the fire, it's keeping the fire going. So we went out to try to find some dry wood and this was a task. We've had these maples for a while that had fallen from a dead maple tree and I'm hoping they work out. To get this process started, we are pouring sap into our boiling pan and into our warming pan. <laughs> mm. And we're trying to get this fire going. The issue is our wood is pretty wet right now. The dead maples don't seem to be catching no matter how much kindling you use, so I think it's time for a plan B. And since the dead cedar branches and twigs seem to be catching really well, I'm going to go out and look for some dead cedar logs that I can cut and throw in the fire and hopefully they'll actually catch. We finally have this thing boiling. Now we're going around to all of our buckets and finding some of the sap. It's frozen, there's not a lot of it, but we're gonna boil it down anyways. We also had a bunch of sap from last year in our freezer that we're gonna boil down. So 
everything's frozen and we're putting it into our warming pan. And then when that warms up, we transfer it over to the boiling pan. The issue with having such a huge ice chunk in our warming pan is the warming pan's not actually getting warm. So when we're transferring the sap over to the boiling pan, it's kind of starting the boiling process over again. When people find frozen chunks of sap in their sap buckets, a lot of the times they'll throw them out and not boil them down because there's less sugar content in the frozen portions than in the liquid portions. Whereas for us, everything was frozen solid and we've been having such a hard time collecting sap. So we were super stoked to have something to boil. Okay, that dry wood is working really, really well, especially like dead cedars that are still in the ground that haven't been like covered and soaking in like wet snow. So this one right here is a dead cedar. I'm gonna take it down and we're gonna use it for our fire. And that's how I'm gonna do it from now on because none of our wood is dry enough. <laughs> watching our maple syrup journey you know that it takes 40 liters which is like three buckets of maple sap to make one large mason jar one liter of maple syrup so it takes a lot of work but it's so worth it it needs to boil to 212 degrees fahrenheit outside before you bring it in for its final boil and boy mm. is it ever delicious when you're doing the outdoor boiling method it's super important that you pour all of your maple syrup through a cheesecloth. It is so messy and full of soot, so this is crucial. It's crazy how many black ashes were just in the maple syrup boiling, but it gives it a really delicious smoky taste. And we made sure to get every last drop out of our cheesecloth because there is no way we are wasting any bit of maple syrup. Next, we put out the fire and we headed home for our final boil. we poured the maple syrup through the cheesecloth one more time just to make sure that we got rid of all the impurities and black soot and now it's time to boil this thing down. It needs to reach to 219 degrees Fahrenheit before we can can it. And you can already tell how much it has boiled and evaporated. Next, it's time to pour this into a sanitized and heated mason jar for proper storage. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's homesteading journey. And if you can do me a huge solid and like, comment, subscribe, whatever you can do, it is so helpful. Anyways, we'll see you next week.